Are you preparing well to embark on a journey to God's kingdom? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. To Catch an Angel by Robert Russell is the autobiography of a young blind man who lives alone on an island in the middle of a river. He goes rowing on the river almost every day by means of a fairly simple system. He attaches a bell to the end of the dock with a timer. The bell rings every 30 seconds. He can row up and down that river and every 30 seconds judge his distance by the sound of the bell. When he has had enough, he finds his way home by means of the bell. In the young man's words, the river lies before me, a constant invitation, a constant challenge, and my bell is the thread of sound along which I return to a quiet base. Life is like a great river. God calls us to venture out on it where there is danger and excitement, but our security is in the bell, which is the Word of God, Jesus Himself. Luke's Gospel in these last few days carries with it an eschatological theme. Eschatology is a combination of Greek words meaning the study of last things. Like some Bible dictionary writes that eschatology includes death, the intermediate state, the afterlife, judgment, the millennium, heaven and hell, but it also refers to the time of Jesus' coming. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus continues to exhort us to be ready and get ready for the future by watching telling signs. He uses as an example the emerging buds of the fig tree to indicate that summer is near Fig trees bear fruit twice a year, in spring or summer, and in autumn, and was one of the main sources of food for the Jews during Jesus' time. It signaled the change in seasons. The kingdom is near, he says. It may mean his heavenly kingdom, and thus the end of this world. Luke wrote his account in 85 AD, or 52 years after Jesus died. Signs and wonders from the sky, the movement of nature, and the earth can alert us to the earth's eventual demise. We may not be able to experience it in our lifetime, for nobody really knows when that time comes. But it can also mean that the kingdom is present in the here and now, every time the values he teaches us are alive and well in us, when we make sacred his presence in our lives. Jesus wants us to discern what is of true value and what is passing. He wants us to realize what is important for our soul to prepare us for his second coming. There was a monk who was very impatient you may wonder, why would a monk be impatient? Don't they become monks so that they don't have to deal with the world? Yes, that's true. So imagine how impatient this monk was. The more he tried, the more impatient he became. So he decided that he must get away to learn to be patient. So he built himself a little home deep in the woods, far away from civilization. Years later, a man was traveling in those woods and met him. The man was amazed to find anyone living so far away from the rest of the world. So he asked the monk why he was there all by himself. The monk said that he was there to learn to be patient. The traveler asked how long he had been there, and the monk replied, Seven years. Stunned, the traveler asked, If there is no one around to bother you, how will you know when you are patient? Annoyed, the monk replied, Get away from me. I have no time for you. Every time you feel impatience welling up from deep within, remember the monk. Learn patience where you are, with situations that challenge your patience and people that push your buttons. As subjects in a kingdom with a king, we are all called to obey and heed the teachings, directions, and commands of our king. With our heavenly king, he expects us to be fruitful in following his commands, that is, to become loving and patient, joyful and peaceful, kind and good and gentle, faithful and in full control of our emotions and will. We may not see the end of the world during our lifetime, but as Jesus says, His words of truth and love shall be valid across generations and should be lived out fully by all who believe. We can only be perked up with energy to obey if we feed our souls with the food that matters. Read the Bible, pray regularly, come with family in worship at His altar, do the Holy Rosary together, go to confession and Holy Communion often, read and watch spiritually uplifting media, give to the poor, pray for those in need, 
do a good deed every day. Dedicate your family to His divine mercy and sacred heart. And when the final bell tolls, we are confident and ready to embark on the journey of an after-lifetime. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, may I be ready and prepared to accept joyfully my eventual fate with expectant faith. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.